I was fortunate uh, to witness the birth of the internet up close. When the web started, it had only pages of text interconnected with hyperlinks, but it had no people. I formed one of the first internet startups with a mission to add people to the web. Exactly 20 years ago, the company launched the, perhaps the first social networking software, uh, which included uh, instant messaging, voice over IP, chat rooms, web-based events, collaborative browsing. You see the interface from 20 years ago, and uh, that's where we started. I sold the company, uh, I bought it back, I sold it again. <laughs> then I got tired of buying and selling and decided to go back to basic science. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, to uh, receive two ERC advanced grants. The first one uh, to work on uh, biomolecular computers, uh, which are molecular scale uh, computers that can uh, be programmed to release drug molecules when and where they're needed. The work received uh, broad recognition and following. Uh, the second ERC grant uh, was to discover, is to discover the human cell lineage tree. Knowledge of the human cell lineage tree will address many fundamental important problems in biology and medicine. For example, what is the origin of metastases, which are the root cause of cancer lethality? And that's an ongoing project. But what happened in the 20 years I was doing basic science? The internet has mushroomed from zero to more than two billion uh, people. But what kind of civilization uh, did it become? If a billion people decide they want to change the rules of a social network or replace it man its management, can they do it? I don't think it's even uh, conceivable. So I think it's fair to say that in the 20 years that have passed, the internet has matured into its middle ages in, in the sense that it now consists of feudal communities with feudal uh, lords that control everything and billions of serfs that have no uh, civil rights and can vote on nothing. We know from history that the, few, that the middle ages were followed by the age of enlightenment. And one of the great thinkers of its time uh, John Stuart Mill declared three basic rights. The right of uh, thought and expression, the right to pursue one's tastes and interests, both are supported by the internet in free countries, and the third, the right to assemble or to unite. The right of assembly uh, uh, is, a, is a precondition for a democracy because without the right to assemble, you cannot take collective action, you cannot form political parties. My main point is that the internet technology today does not support the right of assembly and therefore does not, cannot and does not support democracy. The reason is that even though we can easily form groups on Google, Facebook, you, na Facebook, you name it, uh, we don't know who the people are, uh, on the group are. A person cannot be the person he says he is, or maybe multiple persona are really fakes operated by the same person. Fortunately, help is on its way. The United Nations and the World Bank have uh, a goal to deploy el electronic identities for all of humanity by 2030. With electronic identities, uh, one can easily verify uh, the person who is on the internet and uh, have a confirmed identity, and therefore support uh, all, eventually the freedom of assembly on the internet. And then following it, we will have also hopefully uh, uh, be able to form internet democracy. But what kind of democracy should the internet follow? The internet does not have the size and distance limitations that require representative democracy. On the other hand, everyone voting on everything all the time, although technically possible, is not practical. So which way should the internet go? There is an, a new form of democracy emerging now on the internet, uh, which is a hybrid of representative and direct democracy, in which people can either vote directly or delegate their vote to someone else they trust. Vote delegation can be once or ongoing and can always be revoked or uh, overwritten. It requires very complex software and algorithms to do it. But what's the internet for, if not for that? So uh, delegative democracy is really, uh, is like direct democracy in, in that every vote is done by everyone, either directly or via delegation. And it's like representative democracy in that most of the time, you votes are done by delegates uh, that you delegate your vote to. There is a very small group of efforts in this area right now, but I believe that uh, once uh, electronic IDs are broadly deployed, there will be a Cumbrian explosion of democracy on the internet, and we'll have amazing democratic forums and communities that greatly surpass internetless democracy. Try to envision a future in which the entire of humanity is united by, say, a Facebook-like democratic community. 
It's like the United Nations, except the members will not be nations, it will be the people themselves. And what I'd like to ask you is whether this vision of united humanity uh, is uh, uh, compelling to you, and what would you be willing to do to make it happen? Thank you very much.